there got to be a better way than this. Very nice. <laughs> okay, so we're back again, y'all, and we're going to figure out how to make biscuits with a really good recipe that I use. All right, we, use, we learned biscuit basics prior to this, and now we're going to turn it up just a little bit, make it a little bit more difficult, but it's still extremely easy because I find the number one reason why people don't make biscuits is because they think it's difficult. So let's keep it simple, stupid, and uh, make these as easy as possible, but still be good and flavorful. All right, so what we start off with is our flour. Again, we're going to do two cups. However, this time we're going to do the two cups a little bit differently. We want the flour to be nice and fluffy, and to keep from sifting it and doing it that way, what we're going to do is we're going to spoon it into our measuring cup. So that we have nice aerated flour. Alright, it's one cup. And again, I'm using all-purpose flour, so I, I just don't see the point in taking general-purpose flour and uh, making, uh, put, putting the extra step of adding baking powder to it. Uh, I don't make a lot of bread, and so self-rising is uh, it works great for me. Get our spoon. And now, for a little bit of extra flavor, I use, right now I've got uh, California, uh, California Seasoning Blend. It's a uh, garlic salt. Uh, it's what I choose. Now, some of it is stronger than others, and it's extremely easy to over-season your biscuits, and they'll be too salty, and you, nobody will want to eat them. So, uh, always err on the side of less is more. So, I'm only using not quite a teaspoon of the garlic salt. We got that in there, and first we mix it up. Nothing special here, we just lightly mix it in. And now the key ingredient is Crisco. I'm sure any type of vegetable shortening would work just fine. I use Crisco, that's what I've got. We take a quarter cup of Crisco. Pack it in there so you get a nice quarter cup. And we spoon it out. Try and use the back of your spoon. You'll see why shortly. Because I'm going to take this spoon and I'm going to do a last, a last step before I put them in the oven. Speaking of oven, I actually have my oven already heating up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. That's important because you don't want these things to sit on the counter waiting to go into the oven. Now we got a pastry blender. Pastry blender is the easiest way to do it. You can do it with a couple of butter knives. You take the knives and you kind of chop the Crisco up like that. Um, pastry blender just easier way, to, way of doing it. And now, buttermilk is excellent. And everybody talks about buttermilk biscuits and all this stuff. But really, there's very little difference. Um, I'm using regular milk right here. It's just regular whole milk, and it works great. So you don't often keep buttermilk around unless you like the taste of it, which, which I do. I like drinking it. But it's still rare that I have it around that much. Take a fork and stir it in. Now, the amount of milk that you're going to use will probably be about a half to three quarters of a cup but you want to do this by feel you don't want to just dump it in there you want to put in there a small amount at first and then gradually go until you get the the uh, the product that you want we're gonna add a little bit more you want your flour to completely come apart from the walls of the bowl right you notice how it's not really sticking but you also want your flour to be one solid mass. This right here is still falling apart a lot. Alright, we're getting closer. It's 
still not quite there. There we go. That right there is exactly what we're looking for. Now you don't want to mix it too much. Don't find yourself, you know, constantly mixing for two or three minutes because you'll take the rise out of the flour if you do that. So once you get it to where it needs to be, which is like this, it's all one central mass, but it easily breaks apart from the walls, we're good to go. We're ready to put it on a baking sheet. We take our spoon that we just used, pick up a clump, drop it on there. These are your dropped biscuits. Now, I am not in any way, shape, or form a fan of taking this and then turning it out onto a lightly floured surface and cutting perfectly manicured little biscuits. I'm not a fan of that because they, well for one it's too much work. Um, I just don't see the point you get good biscuits this way. And two, they, uh, they tend to get a little bit too hard on the top and sides. There's all kinds of little problems with it. They might not rise quite as well, quite as good as they should because um, you, you roll them out too much or you knead it too much. So, drop biscuits is the way to go, if you ask me. Mm. We'll make one great big one there. How's that? Now, back to the reason why we wanted the back of this spoon to have some Crisco on it. It's a little bit slicker and so the biscuits won't stick to it as much. We then take the back of that spoon and we work it down a little bit. We make little tiny dimples in the top of these biscuits. All right? So why are we adding little dimples? Well, the little dimples added in there forces the biscuit, for some reason, I don't know, to rise a little bit more. Not that it's needed, so if you want to skip this step, go ahead. But with that right there, we're ready to go into the oven. So we put it in the oven for 10 minutes. We got it already preheated to 500. You can set your, your timer to 10 minutes and pretty much walk away. Although whenever it gets down to that last minute or so, check on it because you don't want to burn them. Voila. And there you go. If you're a fan of um, Red Lobster and their cheese biscuits, you can make them just like this, add a little bit of cheese. Just remember, the more cheese that you add to it, the less it's going to rise. So you got to keep that to a minimum. All right? But these are some excellently flavored, fluffy, homemade biscuits. And really, the prep time, now granted, I do know what I'm doing. I've done this a lot and so I'll be quicker than you but still prep time gotta be less than 10 minutes or you ain't doing something right mmm all I need now is some gravy I guess you want me to make that too click here <laughs> 